Well, the Winery Dog uh, band came together uh, really through a friend of mine called Eddie Trunk. And uh, for those of you that don't know Eddie, he's a DJ in New York, and he has that metal show on VH1. And uh, we became friends a few years ago. And he called me out of the blue, uh, talking about how Billy Sheehan and Mike Portnoy were looking to do a, a new band. They wanted to do a power trio thing, and they needed a guy that could play guitar and sing and, and write songs and all that. So they called me and uh, we got together here in this studio and we basically started jamming ideas and before we knew it, you know, we had a bunch of songs written together and we ended up uh, making a record. <laughs> It was a real easy process, you know, Billy and I have a history, he's one of the first people that I became friends with when I moved to LA over 20 years ago, and uh, we worked together obviously in Mr. Big, for those people that, that know my background, and um, we did a, a, one of my solo tours in Japan when I opened for the Rolling Stones, uh, Billy played with me on that, and so we have a, a great connection musically and as friends, and when we got together with Mike Portnoy, he just fit right into the equation. And uh, now the record's done, we're out playing, and uh, people seem to be excited, you know, the same way we are. Uh, it's interesting because, you know, most of my career I've been making my own records, and, you know, I come in the studio, I write songs, and at the end of the year if I have 10 songs that I like, I put them out and I put a record out. And uh, the timing was perfect because I had just finished an album cycle for the last solo record I did, 24 Hours. And I was getting ready to go and start recording another record and I had this opportunity to work with Billy and Mike. And it just happened that we wrote some really cool stuff together and I figured let me put this aside and try something different. And really it's the first band it's the first band that I've really had, you know? I mean, I joined Poison when I was 21, but you know, that was an established band. And I became a band member, I was writing songs with them, and I was a part of it, and we did our record and did the tour. But that was a band that obviously had a, a long history and a lot of success before I even came into the picture. And uh, I did that again 10 years after that with Mr. Big and uh, I had a band also with Stanley Clark, but all those things were built on something that already existed, and me coming in and kind of adapting and, and, uh, and being a part of something that the foundation was already laid. And this is the first time that I'm coming in cold with guys and we're making our own foundation, making it together, and that's interesting. I, mean, I never really did that before. Uh, and so that's kind of inspiring to, to be a part of that. With the Winery Dogs, what's interesting is that it's a band with three guys that have distinct personalities. Billy Sheehan is Billy Sheehan. Obviously he's playing the bass, but nobody plays the bass the way he does. And the same thing with Mike Portnoy. So you've got guys that have their own distinct voice on their instrument. And what to me is interesting about the Winery Dog record is that when you listen to it, no one lost their identity. You know, when you hear it, if, you, if you're a Mike Portnoy fan, you know he's playing the drums. And if you're a Billy Sheehan fan, you know that's Billy on the bass. And, and for people that are familiar with me, you know, you can identify my work on it as well. And so to me, that's what makes the Winery Dog record special. Um, to, to compare that to what I've done in the past, um, I've definitely got similar things. But this thing, um, there's, there's a, it's like the bar has been raised, you know. Uh, it's a little more aggressive than what I would normally do left to my own devices. But then at the same time, we've got those subtleties that, that I have on my other records, like a song like Regret, for example. 
um, you wouldn't expect to buy a record and have a song like uh, We Are One on there, which is a pretty aggressive song, and then suddenly there's a song like Regret, where, you know, it's basically about the vocal and, and you know, the piano. And so I think that's what makes this band unique, is the range of what the three of us are capable of doing and breaking that stereotype of somebody saying, oh, well, uh, Richie Kotz, and I know him because he was uh, signed to Shrapnel Records in, in 1989, and he's a shredder guy, and people say, oh, I didn't know he could sing. Well, I've been singing for 20 years, you know, but now suddenly people are getting hip to that. In the same way, you hear a song, going back to the song Regret, uh, straight up R&B type vibe, Mike Portnoy's playing the drums, and he's got the drums muffled with towels on the drums, and playing with you know brush sticks, very minimalistic approach, you wouldn't think it was him. So the point of the matter is, is this record shows uh, different sides of all of us, but you still got the identity of who we are. So I think that's interesting and important, and it's part of what excites me of being in the band. I didn't know what to expect, you know? I knew there was people, you know, there were people excited about it, but um, really the, the crowd was really over the top about what we were doing. They knew the words to the songs and singing along, which is amazing. I remember in uh, one of the gigs, I started to lick to uh, uh, I'm No Angel. I started playing that line and the audience was singing the melody. I'm like, you know, really? Normally they sing the chorus and now suddenly they're singing the guitar line before the verse even started. So at that point I figured, all right, we're doing something right here, you know? And coming in, we didn't really have a lot of time to rehearse. I was actually in Europe on a, on a tour of my own, and I came home, we had three days blocked out, you know? We went in and kind of went through everything, worked on the transitions probably more than we worked on the actual songs, you know? How do we get to one song to the next? And, and uh, we just kind of went for it. The craziest thing we did was we filmed the second show we've ever played. And it looks like that's probably gonna be a DVD that they're gonna release. So that should be really interesting. <laughs> it could be career suicide, but I'm sure we played good enough to release it. But, you know, you come into situations like that, you know, being a new band, but I think, I think that in the end, we made a record that we're in love with and, and we're, getting that, we're getting that back from the audience. So I'm just excited to see what happens next. <laughs>